No, I'm going to hand over to you and Caroline. Okay, that's fine. So, yeah, I'll, I'm preparing this talk on cystitis. I realised in uh, FLUTD, which we always used to call it that, I realised that really I should be using the updated term, which is feline idiopathic cystitis. Um, so it will have a slightly different uh, setup today. I'll run through quickly on how the laser works to reduce pain and inflammation for those that are new to laser. And then we'll go through the protocol for cystitis and urethral disease and then have a demonstration. My little cat is ready, sitting here ready asleep. So hopefully she's going to show us how easy and non-painful and not very stressful it is to administer laser to cats. But obviously cats are a, a law unto themselves. So we will see how, uh, how we go with that. And then I've got some case studies as well um on postpartum inadequate urinary bladder function and uh, the results of laser using um uh ultrasound assessment and then just to update it uh some cleaning and sterilization advice uh that's obviously most pertinent to this year and, and what we can do to clean uh between patients so using the MLS class for laser, it's a painless, non-invasive, non-toxic uh, laser. It's easy to deliver, as you can see here, just about we've got the patent here from the US and it's patented in Italy as well. Uh, it's 905 nanometers and 808 nanometers um, of laser that it's delivering. That accelerates healing, provides analgesia, reduces inflammation, and there's no side effects there. So we do need to make sure that we're getting informed consent for the indications and uh, it has been patented to reduce pain, swelling and inflammation. Uh, it's really important that we use eye protection both for ourselves and for the patient. Obviously it used to always be, I, I would always use laser with the owner there and it was really great because they could see how um, straightforward it was to use and how relaxed the animals were um, to, to deliver medication. Obviously that's more difficult at the moment. Um, making sure you remove, uh, particularly in cats, putting the basket out of the way and not on the table so that that's not a cause of any scatter. Um, and obviously certain contraindications if there is any uh, neoplasia, not over neoplasia or hormonal tissue or any pregnancy as well. So the MLS class 4 laser hat works in a number of different ways and has been shown in both lab and um, uh, other studies that um, the way it acts is photostimulation of the cytochrome C within the mitochondria. Um, it leads to a number of different pathways having an effect, increasing the nitric oxide, so you've got increased angiogenesis, uh, vasodilation, smooth muscle relaxation, it increases reactive oxygen species, which then leads to endogenous antioxidant pathways. Um, it has been shown to improve the strength and speed of healing, this is obviously in wounds, but it, and in um, anti-inflammatory as well, so particularly in cystitis, this will help. Um, cytochrome C oxidase increases the ATP energy uh, for cell repair, um, increased fibroblast activity, pro-collagen synthesis, um, has effects on mast cells, macrophages, um, and also in terms of analgesic effect, it helps with the uh, synthesis of serotonin and endorphins. Um, reduces COX-2 mRNA expression, so that will help. Um, and also there's a number of different actions on different inflammatory sides of kinds that it's been found to affect as well. So particularly in feline idiopathic cystitis, obviously often diagnosis is made on the clinical signs, particularly if these are um, recurrent. It is important to rule out other causes of disease. So in general, we do a general health profile, just check the haematology, biochemistry in particular, to look at the renal parameters and the electrolytes for phosphate. Um, I would still, in every case, run a, a urinalysis in, in um, every um, incident, looking at the SG, dip, sediment, and ideally culture um, with a cysto sample if you can. Um, 
if you haven't used laser before, it is sensible to get um, on this animal, it is sensible to get some x-rays or at least ultrasound just to check. One, assess it for in inflammation of the bladder wall, but two, make sure there isn't any stones. Obviously, contrast imaging we used to do, but in general, ultrasound and x-rays are the mainstay now of, of um, examination. So laser should be used as part of a multimodal pain management. Obviously, in cats, we're quite limited to what painkillers have been proven to work. So we know that uh, Metacam really is the only non-steroidal, Meloxicam is the only non-steroidal that we've got that's safe to use in cats. We can't use um, paracetamol, obviously. Other anti-inflammatories, I often will use better GZ if you prepare buprenorphine. Um, or I know that there's a big push to using gabapentin, um, but obviously it, it isn't licensed in cats. So it is important that we use things that have a full evidence base. And you could argue not specifically for cystitis, the studies are not just not done in cats at the moment, uh, but there is a, a large amount of evidence that it really helps with the pain and inflammation. So class four laser will penetrate up to four centimeters for the LF. MLS laser. Obviously the bladder wall and lining that is, is good directly just underneath the abdominal wall when it's moderately full so it will easily penetrate all around there. We do need to be careful with if, if uh, the animals are entire uh, because we don't want to interfere with that hormonal tissue um, and we don't want the bladder massively descended because it would be much harder to treat that whole surface of it. We need it moderately small, um, uh, but I always like not an empty bladder because then you can still palpate it um, and, and see exactly where you need to go. You can deliver the laser on both sides of the abdomen and from underneath as well. And then we can also treat the nerves supplying the bladder in addition. Back. So what I will normally do is if we've got an, um, a, a case, of it, often there is chronic inflammation there, even if it's an acute problem. So I'll use the chronic inflammation setting, um, usually in point mode, because it's a little bit faster. Two points from the left side, two points from the right side, cranium and caudal, and two points from underneath. So six points in total. If it is, um, at the beginning of the course of treatment, I'll use normally chronic pain setting in addition to that. So we're looking at about eight joules per centimetre squared in total that we're delivering to the patient. I'll do that every other day, first of all, and then uh, reducing down uh, one to two times a week for two or three weeks. So I'll just move the... This is up there, and we'll just see this diagram. So there is thought to be a significant amount of wind-up neuropathic pain associated with FIC, um, and this may well be why um, we get common recurrences with any cause of stress or anything like that. Um, so laser therapy of the innovation of the dorsal root ganglia supplying the bladder can help with the down regulation of the acute and chronic pain cycle that we get. So you can see in the lower image, the locations um, on the back that will we'll do that. And here in the x-ray where it corresponds to the areas that we're looking at. So for the hypergastric nerve, we'll um, treat over L2 to L5, there she is, and for good timing, and for the uh, pudendal nerve and pelvic nerve, supplying the external and internal sphincter of the bladder, we'll use, uh, we'll treat over S1 and S3. So here she is, let's turn her around that way. Let's go. Right on time, well done. So this will be over this area and this area first. So I'll do four points when I'm treating the nerves and just here and just here. And then from the side, so you'll palpate the bladder and sort of just elevate it with one hand, ideally obviously having someone holding her at the front end. 
and then treat on the side. Oh, either side. So I'll just show you on here. We'll have a chronic inflammation, chronic pain setting to treat urethral disease. Often, um, once you've given painkillers or you've got the cat sedated, you rather than having to forcefully pass a catheter, you can milk the grit and things that are often obstructing, particularly in males, um, and milking around past the obstruction. You can use the laser directly in the perineum and over the um, penis to um, reduce that urethral spasm that's going on. And sometimes that will really help to enable you to pass the catheter. Um, you normally will still want to pass the catheter and obviously you have to use your own judgment whether you leave that in or not, whether you get a really good stream after that. I'll use then acute inflammation setting on point mode. Um, if you do get repeated urethral spasm and you're having to leave the um, catheter in place, you can still use the laser even if the catheter is there um, and it will hopefully reduce the chance of um, that reflex uh, dysuria that you sometimes get when you remove the catheter. So I will switch screens now and just show you on here the settings that I will use. So we go on to companion animal. Thank you, Chocolate. Yes, we start in roles and we come shortly. So we'll have chronic inflammation, and I'll choose depending on what the colour of the coat is black colour coat or white colour coat. Um, you can use scan mode as well. Um, often you don't need them that size, 50 centimetres squared, you could use less than that. Um, but I will usually use point mode because it does shorten the treatment time to just two and a half minutes. So I'll set that up there. And Twiglet, my little cat, does suffer from uh, intermittent cystitis. So I'll put my glasses in place. And we'll just see if she'll tolerate this to the end. Normally keep the um, head of the um, laser safely there. So I can start when I'm ready by pressing the button and stop it at any time just by pressing the button again until my patient is ready. And then simply just press the button there. Once you know where the bladder is, you can just apply that onto the side of the abdomen. I'll normally do sort of moderately cranial of the, the cranial end of the bladder. In one point. And then the machine tells you when you're ready to start the next point. Just like when you're taking a cysto sample, some cats will actually tolerate surprisingly well um, sort of sitting them up. Sometimes they sort of sit down. So just like when you're doing a cysto, you can then go across in, you know, two points. You don't, even if you're in point mode, you don't have to keep it absolutely still. You can still move it around a little bit. And if they do suddenly wriggle, you can just quickly turn it off, maybe change position. Okay. And then moving round to the left hand side. I'm just sort of trying to just rub that over the skin 
um, and, and moving the head around rather than facing it forwards where you're going to be more getting the kidney. Um, and I think it's more being held that she's not too keen on rather than the laser. Well done. So any questions on that? Has anyone used has anyone used laser for, for cystitis thing you have Carl and you is uh, I have used it a bit, yeah, but I've done not as much as I probably ought to do. It should be a part part of the sort of uh, therapeutics. I was very impressed when I went to NABC once and uh, went to a laser lecture and the, the lady showed us an actual real-time video of lasering a, a urethral obstruction and uh, during the laser treatment with a little bit of massage, suddenly we got a good flow of urine, so I thought I'd mm. want to try yeah, that. Have you done it? I get poor in your collar now. I remember doing a demonstration in um, a practice in Hendon with a tail pool. It was similar. It's a tail pool and they'd had to catheterize um, the cat because it ur wouldn't urinate. We used a laser and I literally got in the car, drove from Hendon it was to the M25. By the time I had it on the M25, I had a phone call from the practice saying the cat was urinating normally. And every time they used a the laser, it urinated. And you just think, you know, that's just, it's just a great result. So, you know, that was a complete amputation of a tail produced an RTA. And without that, the prognosis wasn't great. So, you know, laser does help with that. It, you know, and we can see how many anecdotal evidence, how much anecdotal evidence there is. But if practices just get in and use it for these sorts of things, it's just going to build on, as Carl says, is using it in practice and using it for more and more things. And that's what these, these sorts of sessions are about, is just trying to get laser use not just for the standard arthritis or post post-op wounds but actually looking at a wide range of conditions like the otitis externa and things as well i just think it's just such an asset to the practice mm. okay caroline so, um, uh, yeah i think um it there's uh a lot to be said for you know you you know a lot of people think well oh, it's an alternative treatment, but the standard treatments we currently use, you know, the number of times that a catheter is placed and then the trauma that that does, and then it ends up needing requiring surgical treatment when potentially a more hands-off approach and, you know, letting the inflammation calm down um, before, you know, obviously it is an emergency if the can't, cat can't urinate at all, but using these um, alternative, you know, there's certainly, you know, has been good, some reports of, of very much more, you know, uh, sedation and um, pain relief. And, and if the cat can urinate themselves without, you know, the it, one, because they can't afford it, but there has been reports that that will work well. And if we can add that then, rather than just because they can't afford it, but trying these, um, using laser instead because it's less invasive and then you know potentially with a better outcome for the patient without having to have, have surgical intervention instead. So we'll think, just uh, go on, I'll put this uh, screen share back up and then have that there as well. I think owners as a, as a whole are, are looking are more wise and, and more looking for an alternative of, of using drugs and things as well. So you know, I'm certainly not anti-drugs or any of my animals, but if there was an alternative, which means I'm less reliant on drugs to actually get the treatment which I need, then I would certainly, as an owner, be looking at that something as, as something which I would be keen on. Because, it, you know, you just don't want the side effects which drugs can have. Mm. So, so this um, case that I'm looking at is actually from the ASA Laser uh, website. There's dozens and dozens hundreds of different cases for different treatments that they've shown um, with use of laser. Um, this was brilliant. Um, she had um, uh, a litter. Uh, it was um, her second litter, I believe. She had no problems with the first one. Um, and she had problems about 10 days after giving birth and there was a large abdominal mass and there was, um, so they did some x-rays and they, uh, they, 
I'm concerned it could have been a pyometra, but it was a really hugely distended bladder that um, she wasn't able to urinate. So um, a catheter was placed and she was helped to, uh, her bladder was expressed uh, manually. Uh, this was then removed and she went back to obviously look after her kittens. A few days later, she was admitted again, urgently with complications, and she had a neurological neurological assessment um, and they um, were concerned that there was an issue with the pedendal and the pelvic nerves potentially having been damaged in um, uh, when she um, had the kittens. Uh, so she was prescribed uh, by the neurologist anti-inflammatories and under medication. Now unfortunately the owner was very reluctant to give these uh, because she didn't want any concerns. A lot of the um, even um, meloxicam, it's not licensed to give during pregnancy or, or during lactation, even though it is sometimes used and is thought to be safe. So MLS treat treatment was recommended. She didn't have any other treatment. Um, so they used the standard head, chronic inflammation setting, uh, in contact with the skin, and she had treatment over her bladder and then in... 12 points in total, so I think it's three points over the back, uh, L1 to L5 and then S1 to um, S3. Um, total treatment was five minutes and that was um, done uh, twice a week. Um, and uh, the outcome, oh, sorry, it was, tr it was done daily for the following sort of five to six days. And what happened after the first treatment, yes, so 20 minutes after the first treatment, she urinated normally. And then after the following treatments, normal elimination of urine and feces within half an hour of the treatment. So the inflammation that was around the nerves potentially following, you know, having had the kittens, the laser helped that to settle down. Um, her attitude to actually feeding her kittens and looking after them was much improved than before. So um, previously she'd been a bit aggressive. She had been managing, but it was much better. And she didn't need any of the medications or anything like that. Um, so the other case, it's just very brief, some pictures there. Apologies for the quality of the images. These aren't actually my images, uh, but I have seen, when I was demonstrating and um, uh, one of our ultrasound machines in practice, and there was a cat there with uh, chronic cystitis and they just said, oh, could just, just have a look at this cat, make sure there isn't a stone in there. Anyway, I scanned the bladder and it was very, very similar to this. In fact, to begin with, the bladder was so small, I couldn't even see it. And then it, as I was scanning, uh, the sedation had kicked in, so obviously a bit more urine was produced. And then you could see very similar to this, very thickened um, bladder wall. Um, that you know, no wonder these poor cats are getting recurrent signs of cystitis and their bladder lining is, is that thickened. Um, so uh, treatment was started, chronic inflammation, I would usually use six points. Uh, the, there isn't usually an issue with the pelvic nerves, but certainly if the, we do any harm, treating over the spine as well. Uh, normally it would be two and a half minutes of treatment and uh, then the following image, so six weeks later, um, is obviously much, much, you can see between the calipers, are much thinner um, and obviously uh, allowed a lot more filling as well. Uh, so it doesn't constantly feel like the bladder needs empty. Uh, there is another study here. Something interesting, like you say, sometimes we sort of think, oh, add laser. If our normal anti-inflammatories aren't working, maybe add laser in. And certainly that's something that we've shown in... Um, uh, osteoarthritis can really it can then often lead to a reduction in the amount of non that we need to be using but we may really need to be thinking about it the other way um, in a human study following molar removal uh, they actually showed significant improvement in clinical signs when the laser was given on day zero and day three compared to the first laser treatment given on day two and day four. So, you know, why delay using something that's going to reduce pain and inflammation when we've got a really, really painful condition 
um, that you know the owners are often quite distressed about as much as um, the cat because we've got you know puddles all around the house um, you know I know myself now I, it was a weekend and, and I'd had um, I had some Metacam in the cupboard so I started that but my cat will normally only will need um, uh, buprenorphine as well I normally just give under the tongue a little bit of painkiller for her there but she even with I didn't have any in the house so um, obviously use the laser in addition and um, the after not doing for a, a day and then the bleeding stopped straight away after that um, and then the, another couple of days later the normal urination so just to run through cleaning protocol because I know this is often a question I get asked but particularly at the moment it's important that we just review this so you can um, clean the whole of the laser and the machine using uh, benzyl conium chloride which is back 50 uh, it's got lo lots of other trade names but there is um, as long as you're not using um, an alcohol based cleanser then that should be fine and then drying afterwards with a clean cloth obviously currently you're using your normal ppe with your laser goggles but in addition uh, bear in mind, if you are having an assistant, you'll be also wearing a mask and it's advisable to have the gloves and an apron as well, particularly if there's any risk that the patient could be coming from a COVID positive household. Um, you can remove this head, you can see um, in that picture. Move these over here again. You can remove that whole head and that whole uh, piece there, as well as these sections, can be cleaned in a light uh, solution of soap and water. You can uh, remove then eat, eat, with a, uh, any contamination at all there. Um, if there isn't any contamination of urine or anything like that, you can then rinse them under hot water. These two guides here can be autoclaved. Don't put the so, rest, of it, rest of it in. I've had to replace a couple for customers who've put the, the orange tip in an autoclave. <laughs> yeah, not the plastic, not but the plastic. metal yeah. guides, and that will just yeah. pop in, in and out. So, um, yeah, so the orange, yeah, the, that can't be all okay. no. from experience, uh, but um, the the other metal tips can. Um, obviously, more important would be using those in jewelry and things like that. So, so in summary, here she is suffering from another bout of cystitis in her litter tray this time. Um, so um, the dual emissions um, of 808 nanometers and 905 nanometers will, it's a targeted treatment, increasing penetration and effect over lasers that only can be scanned over the body. Um, so then we have happy cats after that. There she is. Okay, thank you for that, Caroline. Has anyone got any questions? Is there uh, anyone got uh, any feedback? Um, I've got a question coming through. I don't know if Caroline, you can see this. How often do you have to repeat the therapy in cats with FIC on average? Um, and Sandra, thank you. From uh, every time there's an episode. Um, I will normally treat, you know, you can give treatments um, every day if you need to, but I will normally do it twice a week. And after three sessions, normally they, they don't need um, that. But at that point, I will go to um, treat again fortnightly um, and then go on to um, either when there's an episode again, you might not need to see them for six months. Um, but if they do have um, a recurrence um, more in more quickly, I will normally then go on to a regular treatment every month or so. Um, 